and hello, hello everybody. Welcome to the long overdue and long delay painting video on the M1A2 Abrams 135th scale from Mang. This is the Tusk 2 version that I'll be building. And getting right into it, uh, basically just the uh, pre-shading and uh, pre-highlights going on. I'm using uh, Badger Sty Sty Stino Res? I think it's Stino Res. <laughs> um, primer. The black is already down, as you can see, and now I'm going to uh, put the white down on it. Uh, just, uh, just a little bit about this video, I guess. Uh, I think it was something like three years in the making, this model and this video. Um, just, I had a lot going on. Um, in between, uh, just, you know, a lot of change, a lot has happened. And so it just took me a long time to finish this one, and boy am I happy to be done with it finally. Anyways, this is what everything looks like once the white was applied. Um, as you can see, it's quite stark at this point. I um, kind of like it the way it looks. Uh, I, I've been I've been wanting to do another UN vehicle just because I really like the white on tanks. Uh, I might do one sometime soon. Anyways, uh, next color going on is Desert Tan Shadow from uh, Mang. I got the, um, the the paint kit along with it. It's AK Paints. Uh, what I'm using is a uh, Iwata something or other airbrush. I forget whatever the hell, whatever the hell the the most popular Iwata airbrush is. Um, my badgers are out of commission, and I did not want to pull out the uh, $400 hardened Steenbeck for this, so I am using my Iwata for this. And it's actually, this was my first time using it. Uh, you know. You put putting it through significant use on painting a model, and I'm actually very, very happy with uh, with 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 how it went and and how it works. And it's, it's a very good it's a very good airbrush. I think I paid something like $150 for it. I know you can get it a lot cheaper online, but um, I needed one the day I needed it, so I had to go out and get it at a local art store. But uh, yeah, I'm very, very pleased with how it works. Um, anyways, also this video, I was hoping to keep it to around 30 minutes. I was able to edit it down to an hour and 15. So you guys, those of you who, who stick around, thank you for uh, for your patience. But uh, yeah, this is another long one. I wasn't able to get it down any lower. Um, also, I'll see if I end up including any music in here or if I'm just gonna, if you guys are just gonna have to listen to my pretty sexy voice for the whole hour and 15 minutes. Um, anyways, US Desert Tan going in now. Um, just basically putting it down in smaller areas, uh, you know, to, 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 to have the, um, the, the paneling effect on here. And uh, I'll do the same with the uh, highlight color once it's time for that but uh yeah i couldn't i couldn't be more pleased with how the uh how the iwata performed um i'm not a huge fan of the ak colors uh they're great for airbrushing and i know that's what they're meant for obviously but um i do some paint touch up with a brush afterwards using the, the same colors obviously and uh i just was not too happy with how they how they brush paint i guess uh, sorry if you guys hear me sipping every so often, but I figured if I'm going to be talking for an hour and 15 minutes, I have a cup of soup and a cup of water next to me here just to keep my keep my throat from drying out and so I don't cough on the mic. Um, anyways, um, as you guys are watching me do this, like I said, I mean this this thing this thing was definitely a journey. Um, this model was definitely a journey to go through. Um, uh, you know, between uh, two, three moves, um, career change, uh, new baby born, um, little baby, little baby girl. Yes, you see, a dad now, um, and just just a bunch of stuff. I mean, this this was, yeah. And I'm happy to be done with it, and then to move on to to other projects now, because it's kind of kind of a. Uh, I don't really, you know, don't really want to get too sentimental on here, but it was kind of like closing out uh, several chapters and then just moving forward, you know? 
but um, yeah, so anyways, um, now the uh, final highlight color is going on here. It does look a lot brighter on camera than it actually did in person. Uh, once you guys see the finished product, it does not look as stark as it does on camera, and I'm sorry for not being able to keep everything on camera, but that's just, you know, that's just how I roll. Those of you, those of you that have watched previous video know that, so <laughs> that's, uh, that's still one of my challenges, is I, I don't do a very good job at keeping everything on camera. Anyways, um, here's the finished product as far as the, uh, pretty much the base coat goes, because that's all that's, this, this really was. And, uh, yeah, I was quite pleased with how that turned out. Quite pleased with how that turned out. So, uh, moving forward, or moving forward, uh, just so you guys know, the final, final product of this, I'm not very happy with. Um, I actually think it kind of looks like a turd. <laughs> you guys will be the judge of that at the end of the video. But, uh, yeah, I wasn't very happy with it. I, the, the ending, the, the end portion, or the second half of, of me painting on this, I just kind of rushed through it because I was just so sick of it at that point that I just kind of rushed through it. So I wasn't very pleased with it, with how it came out, but but it's okay, as I said, just get it done and move on. Um, anyways, I believe this is U.S. Olive Drab that we're putting on now. I'm painting the, I'm starting to work on the stowage details and just various uh, other bobs and ends and, and bits and pieces. So uh, these are ammo boxes. I got a resin kit from whoever the manufacturer was. You guys saw the box. <laughs> um, I got a resin kit of stowage for this and yeah and here we are um and again i do uh you know i do highlight the uh the the, the stowage and then the ammo boxes and so on and so forth as well again using all the uh all the paint that came in the paint set that was specifically designed for this model so uh dubai brown now from scale 75 this is actually my first experience uh, airbrushing scale with scale 75 paints. Um, they're not too bad. You just have to thin them down quite a like you have to thin them down quite a bit. They're they're a little they're they're a little precarious to work with. Um, obviously, they're not really meant for airbrushing the scale color at least. Um, they're not designed to be airbrushed. But with a little TLC, they, they actually work quite fine. Um, so yeah, I'm using Dubai Brown here to base coat. Uh, stuff that's going to be brown. And also, at this point, uh, some of you guys might see um, might see moisture spraying out of my airbrush at various times. I was having issues with my moisture trap on the compressor. This was, I believe, in June or July or August even that I was doing this portion of it, of last year. And so it was quite humid and quite warm even with the uh even with the air conditioning running and so I was and plus I was having an issue with my moisture trap on my airbrush compressor so I ended up having to get a new compressor probably about a week after I did this but anyways here's the ammo boxes here's some more uh sacks and backpacks and such um, I'd be honest with you, I think as far as uh, how many hours went into this project in total, most time was spent on doing these uh, stowage, and I overdid, it a little, I overdid it a little bit because I painted way more than I needed. I maybe ended up using two-thirds, if, if even that, maybe, maybe even half of what I painted. Uh, I ended up using on the actual tank, so so yeah, I, I overdid it a little bit on the uh, on the stowage, but I think it was a definitely adds a nice touch to it. I just shouldn't have painted as many as I did. That's okay. Anyways, what I'm doing here is uh, with the highlights, uh, airbrushing the highlights on there, just kind of sticking to the top and the edges of of the ammo boxes, kind of fades into dark. Um, these will get edge highlights afterwards that I do with a brush. But I'm just kind of trying to bring it up with the airbrush to save myself some work later on. I'm now using U.S. Desert Tan Light uh, again, same colors that went on the uh, the actual tank is what I'm use what, I, what I'm using for for some of the stowage stuff.
good thing is once this video is published, once I'm done with the uh, edits and once this video gets published, I think I finally found some or enough time to be able to publish videos a little bit more regularly. So um, I don't know what the next project is going to be yet. Although I'm thinking it might either be... And now we're doing a Mediterranean blue from scale color for the... Um, the gas cans and the one thing I um reason I'm including this in here this clip I think I edited this out or I wanted to edit it out but I left it in here for you guys is because the blue just did not want to spray through the airbrush the Mediterranean blue just was not cooperating at all at this point so I ended up brush painting those um again scale color scale 75 scale color just not formulated for airbrushing, so. so I ended up brush painting them afterwards. Anyways, Arabic Shadow and Sahara Yellow now, and a Windsor New an old Windsor Newton Series 7 size 2 brush. Um, I did not use, that, that was another thing, I think that was my downfall with this model, is I did not use a good brush for the brush painting part. I was just, again, too lazy, and, and I just wanted to get it done at this point, so. Um, painting all the straps on the on the stowage stuff on the bags and so on and so forth. Um, but like I was saying, I think the next project is probably going to be either a helicopter, um, either a uh, uh, me what is it 35 hind from Hobby Boss. I think that's 172nd scale, or the 148th scale uh, Apache Longbow from Academy. Or uh, something that I already have halfway started is uh, the 172nd scale X-Wing from Bandai, the Red 5 X-Wing. Luke Skywalker's basically, I, I think. Um, so I might just continue that, although I'm not really feeling another Star Wars thing quite yet. And I also have a couple of videos to edit through um, from my Twitch streams. A figure painting, so I'm going to look into potentially editing those down for YouTube and publishing those, but I have to see how much work that would actually entail and if I'm willing to do that, or if they're any good, actually, so uh, that that's, that's still up in the air. But yeah, so next projects, either, either one of those two helicopters, an X-Wing, or I might just do another tank, who knows. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going back to... Um, to the uh, water water canisters and the coolers now, as you can see, I'm brush painting the Mediterranean blue because again it was just not cooperating through the airbrush. So, oh well. And that's again brush painted what it looks like. Um, trying to trying to decide now, and I'm sorry I haven't done one of these in a long while. I haven't voiced one of these in a long while, especially an hour and 15 minute long one. Trying to decide if I'm going to just keep babbling, whether you guys just want to listen to me babble, or whether I should do some music. So here's my thought. I watch a lot of modeling videos on YouTube. I like the longer ones just because usually when I'm watching them, I am modeling myself, and I prefer the ones with people talking just because I can listen to it and I don't always have to look up to see what's going on as opposed to if it's music then you know I have to kind of pay attention to closer attention to it so I, so I know what's going on so I think I'm gonna try and babble on for a while and see how that goes and let me know in the comments which one you guys prefer music or me babbling anyways um, the red was Whatever the darkest scale color red is, I'm sorry, and I'm putting a um, a coat of Arctic blue on the portions that are going to be white for a base for white, and now I'm starting on the white. These are all scale color paints, scale 75 scale color paints. Um, white, uh, Arctic blue, and the red, I believe. Actually, I think I still have it here, so I can tell you guys, those of you that aren't looking up, the red was deep red as the base for the cooler. Um, I'm also not considering, but eventually, uh, obviously it's not in this video, or obviously or not, but 
Not in this video. I also have to stop saying obviously because rewatching my videos, when I rewatch my videos, I catch, like, I can play a drinking game every time I say obviously, so. And be drunk by the time I'm done with the video. Um, but, anyways, uh, in future videos, I am going to attempt to list the colors that I use for the project for in, in that video, uh, you know, at the beginning of the video or at the end of the video, something or other. I am not going to do it on this one, I just want to get this one published, but if I can get into a rhythm of releasing videos more often, or more regularly at least, then I am going to try my damnedest to improve just the overall quality. Um, including a breakdown of the materials and paints and, and stuff that I use at the beginning of every video. Anywho, um, you saw me doing the, uh, the the covers for the water canisters. I used NATO Black on that. Now I'm doing the MRE bags, which I believe I used Iroko for. And that's the coolers done. That's some of the stowage, uh, some of the uh, sleeping pads or blankets or whatever those are. I don't know... Those other two parts, and I'll mention it to you guys when, when it comes up on screen again, I don't know what those are. They look, to me, they look like folded stretchers or folded chairs. Either one of the two. Um, they have metal bits to them, and, and they just look like either chairs or stretchers that are folded, but or maybe some kind of like canopy or something, but I, I can't tell what those are. But I painted up a couple of anyways, just to give some uh, variation to the stowage on the back. Anyways, all the um, all the base colors are done other than the metallics. I'm putting some, uh, I believe it's either gunmetal or chainmail, from Reaper uh, Fantasy range. On the metallic parts, um, again, they're either stretch those part those, those are the ones I'm talking about. They're either stretchers or chairs or something that's folded up. Um, clearly, but I just, I, I couldn't tell what it is, and the, uh, the the resin kit that these came with didn't actually tell me what they were, so. Anyways, I did all the buckles on the backpacks, as well with the metal, and now, if I am not mistaken, we are going to move on to uh, washing these, giving them a, a nice dark wash. To blend it all together a little bit, yep, I'm going to use soft tone and I'm going to use dark tone, about a 50, no, about a 75% soft tone to a 25% dark tone mix. Uh, the only reason I'm doing this, and you guys can actually watch me mixing this, um, strong tone would be my preferred choice to use on this, but I couldn't find any of my strong tone bottles at that point, so that's why I was making do with soft tone and mixing in some dark tone to get it as close as possible to strong tone, and it worked quite well. I mean, it, it yeah, it worked out quite well. So as you can see, um, about 75% soft tone in there already, and just adding a little bit of dark tone, about 25%, mix it all up, and then we go to town on it. Uh, I think I had a little bit of water in there too, just so it's not too thick. And then we go to town on it, and cover, basically paint all the, uh, all the stowage, cover it all up with the, uh, want to be strong tone mix. I absolutely love building and painting modern armor. Um, even World War II armor is it, it's so much fun. But the sheer amount of time and energy that goes into these 135th scale tanks, especially the modern ones, Halfway through these projects, I'm just like, okay, I just want to be done with it. <laughs> um, I love the end result. Absolutely do. For for the most part, as I said, I think this one actually turned out to be a little bit of a turd, but I'll let you guys judge that at the end. Um, I think I could have done a much better job on it. I get very lazy with it later on, and I'll let you guys know exactly when that starts to happen. Um... But yeah, as much as I love the modern armor and, and even the World War II armor, um, just, you know, a, a build, building the model itself um, with the time I have available now, you're, you're probably looking at at least a week or two. Um, and then painting, 
which which is the part part I enjoy. I actually don't really enjoy the building uh, building portions of it that much. It's fun, but it's just not really not really you know that engaging, I guess. Um, and then the painting you're looking for probably two weeks to a month at my pace and at my currently available time. Um, and you know, those of you guys that are, and this is where the, uh, sorry, this is where the, uh, wash has dried. It created, uh, some nice shadows in there. Um, those of you guys that are saying, well, why don't you build, you know, smaller scale? I don't like 172nd scale that much. I think they're, there's nothing wrong with it. Don't get me, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And you can create some amazing looking models. And I might give 172nd a shot. They just don't feel as... It just doesn't feel as epically awesome to me as a 135th scale does, you know? And when you paint a 135th scale on stone, you're like, whoa, you know, it's nice and big and looks good and, and, and everything, but... 172nd, I painted, what, two two models in my entire modeling career, 172nd? Just, they never really, never really grabbed my attention. I might give it a shot or another try. I know you can do some amazing things with them, but it's just... Yeah, I don't think it's my cup of tea, but I might give it a try, depending on, on if I'm able to, to be a little bit more uh, consistent with 135th scale, or if I just decide that they take up way too much time. Anyways, going back over with the Mediterranean blue now to start highlighting these, just going over the edges basically and cleaning up some of the wash that uh, that, that that shouldn't be there. And making them pop a little bit. But, uh, yeah, as I said, these uh, these stowage details they took they they took so long to paint. I mean, I must have again because this this entire project was you know on and off three years in the making. Um, I don't know how many hours I have in total on this, but the 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 stowage details alone there's got to be at least fourteen hours of work in these and just yeah they just took so long i mean i'm glad i did it because again i think they they look really cool in the end but uh number one i painted way too many of them i just what i should have done was dry fit before painting and and figure out what i was going to use and what i wasn't going to use instead of just like eyeballing and be like oh yeah i can use all this i mean th those ammo boxes that you see the green and the tan ones i don't think i used more than like three or four of them in total, like, you know, um, the kit also, the resin kit also, and this is, uh, me mixing in some white into the, uh, Mediterranean blue to give it one final highlight here, one final edge highlight, but the, uh, the kit also came with, um, with, like, uh, plastic bottles and, uh, cardboard boxes and stuff like that, I didn't even bother with that just because I, I feel like it would have looked way too cluttered at that point, um, Originally, when I was doing this, what I'm doing this right now, I'm still thinking that, yeah, I'm going to use the plastic bottles, uh, maybe leave one of the coolers open, um, maybe, you know, use some of the, uh, the the cardboard boxes, put them on there. Um, but by the time I was done with it, by the time I was done with it and it was time to maybe apply that, I was like, yeah, screw that. Like, I'm at that point, I was lazy enough, or I was already lazy enough, though, and, like, I just want to get this done. But, uh, anyways, that's the water containers, which I believe I ended up using one or two of only. Uh, that's the coolers, um, the stretchers, or chairs, or whatever they are, and I think the other ones are either sleeping pads, or just, like, folded up tarps or something. Now the coolers, obviously, not obviously, yep, drink, if you have it. <laughs> um, the coolers are getting, uh, white on them. Now the white's getting touched up. Now going back in with the Dubai brown over the brown stuff. Um, the sacks and the, the, the folded up stuff and the uh, backpacks and stuff. Again, this is all just to highlight it to make it pop a little bit more. Um, which in the end, um, I'm glad I did it because it just looks that much better when it's on the tank itself. But, uh, yeah, this is, as I said, we're, what, 24 minutes in? And so far, 15 minutes of that have been spent on, almost 15 minutes, on these little details. This was the most time-consuming portion of the entire 
the, the entire project. Um, anyways, that's what the brown looks like with the Dubai brown on it. Now I am going to, I believe, let's see, let's see if I remember this correctly. Yep, add some Iroko to the Dubai brown to give it one last little edge highlight, just so it pops that much more. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know how in the world I ever expected to be able to bring this video down to uh, to, to half an hour without, you know, without sacrificing a majority of, or sacrificing, without deleting a majority of the content. And that's it with the Oroko on it now. And here's one of the backpacks. And here's one of the other, I think those are backpacks too, right? Some kind of sacks. Now we're going to do light grabbish green, I believe it's what it's called, um, to highlight the uh, green details. Same, uh, same story with these. Um, once, once I was done with these details, with the, with the stowage and, and just all the little extras that go on it, I was so incredibly relieved. I'm like, holy moly, I'm almost done here. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is almost done. And then uh, once I got into, which you guys will see later, once I get into like the edge highlighting and the uh, weathering and stuff, I was like, you fool, you weren't almost done, you moron. Here's the green, and highlights, edge highlights on the green. Um, now going back over with some olive green. Because I believe I decided that I made it a little too bright in some point, and and some point, so I'm darkening it down a little bit. I think that's the what the problem was. The highlights were a little too stark. So I think this is just me uh, going back over and darkening it down a little bit. I think. Yep. And here it is done. Here it is, again, done, or close to done, because I actually end up dry brushing some more highlights on this. With the uh, light grabbish green, I believe. Yep, there we go. So, yeah, I remember I remember all this from like six months ago. <laughs> but, um, uh, again, let me know in the comments how you guys feel about just me blabbing through all this and, and hearing me breathing and so on and so forth. I thought about doing a uh, push to talk on this, but I figured I'd just let it roll, and I don't know, I kind of like this format of, uh, of video a little bit more, like I said, I feel like it, uh, at least for me, if I were the one watching it, it would just, just work better, because I don't have to pay super close attention to what's on the screen. If I'm just listening to somebody talk through it, and I can look up every so often and see what you know, see how they're doing on it. So, but let me know if this works for you guys. If not, we'll uh, we'll change it around. So, anyhow, this is what the uh, green looks like dry brush now. And of course, I decided to show every single one of the freaking green pieces because why not? Why not? And I did add a few green details to the tank itself, like you see the um, storage box there on the side of the turret, and uh, there's also one wheel that I painted green, yes, one. Um, thought process being, you know, they were using parts from tanks that were originally deployed to Europe or something, or, I, I don't know, I just wanted to break up the monotony on it a little bit. Or monotony, not really monotony, but I just wanted to break it up. And here's Doggy helping me paint. And, yeah, that was... I don't know what that was. That was me just putting them away into a little container or something. I don't know. Anyways, let's paint the uh, tires using NATO Black here. Um, just simple brush painting, really. Um, I don't use masks on wheels, I think. It takes longer to mask it for me to airbrush... If I wanted to airbrush it, than it does for me to just brush paint it. So, so I didn't bother with uh, masking and airbrushing it. I just brush painted it. 
Um, now the wheels are going to go on, I believe. Yes, indeed. Um, the wheels are going to go on, the tracks are going to go on, and all the uh, all the armor uh, plates are going to go on as well as as well as the skirts. Um, from what I remember, I didn't have any fit issues with the wheels. Um, what I did screw up on was when I built this originally three years ago, I left off uh, one track link so I can then, you know, when I'm installing the tracks, I can then snap it together and, and you know, have working tracks as the kit's designed to do. Um, I also painted the fenders here. Um, now I'm uh, edge highlighting it with a, uh, with a, I believe I added some gray in there, or some white into the NATO black. Um, anyways, so yeah, when I was installing the tracks, I left off one track link so I can connect it together, but by the time, again, two years later, however long it was at that point, I went to install it, I had lost those pieces, so I kind of had to glue the tracks on in a weird way. Uh, that said, um, those are covered by the skirts, so... You can't see it, but that was that was the first that was the first screw up really, and there's quite a bit more on here because yeah um this was this what you're watching now was done between last June and August I believe I'm using uh, scale fantasy games DK Black on the uh, on the machine guns. Uh, but yeah, this was done between June and August of last year. Um, I only finished this model last week, so and I will let you know when we're when we get to to modern day of me working on this a couple of weeks ago, trying to finish it because that's when I got really lazy with it and really we just wanted to get it done. Anyways, all the machine guns, the ammo belts, um, the uh, grenade launcher, the smoke launchers, and the um, viewports, and so on and so forth. Painted black. Um, those of you guys have watched my other tank building videos, you know I don't... Uh, I usually paint all the uh, clear pieces and all the lights, headlights and stuff um, by hand as opposed to leaving them clear and then just just doing a uh, wash or, or a filter rather a color filter over it um, I think it just adds a nice it obviously it makes it look a lot more cartoony but I think it adds better contrast to it granted it's not very realistic but that just that's that's my style and that's how I roll so um, edge highlighting the edge highlighting kind of semi dry brushing edge highlighting the machine guns with arctic blue just to have them pop a little bit more and I did go a little overboard on that so then I go back with uh, I did go back with a wash uh, with a black wash and tone it down a little bit because that was a little too stark on the details that were to remain black um, it was a little too too popish um, same with the uh, track uh, links did the same thing, painted those, or dry brushed them with uh, Arctic Blue from Scale Color. And now I'm going over with Dark Tone. And bringing it down a little bit, because again it was a little too stark at that point. Which actually ended up looking working out quite nicely. I did like the end result of, uh, of what all the black pieces ended up looking like. As you can see there it doesn't look bad. It can look a lot better too, but it doesn't look bad. I'm not being that lazy with this yet. Um, I'm still, again, last June, last August, I'm still motivated to finish this and do a good job on it. And um, this was still with the hope of uh, making this a, a, you know, an actual decent looking model and maybe entering it in some competitions or something, but it's, as as we progress through this, I will let you know when I got uh, lazy with it. Now for all the um, for all the viewports and the uh, 
what you may call it, what you may call it, yeah. For all, all the what you may call it, I'm using deep red as a base here, and I will highlight it up to I believe, not I believe. I will let you know. I'm sure I'm going to show it on screen too, but I'm going to let you know anyways. And Terry's red from scale 75. I'll let you know now since I'm running out of things to babble about. Um, and Terry's red from scale 75 is going to be my final red for highlights on here, and I think I added, ended up adding some white to it at the end, too, to really make it pop. That's, uh, yeah, I mean, in retrospect, I should probably plan these things out a little bit better and either mask them, or, because there was a lot of, um, a lot of cleanup work from stuff like this, you know, I have to go over with some of the tan parts, or where I went over the, the line, and so on and so forth, but just, I, I don't mind doing it, and I just enjoy doing it more like this, so that's why I do it. And I, again, to me it looks better than, and I'm sure a lot of you would disagree, but to me it looks better than, uh, than if I left the, uh, clear parts clear, masked them, and then did a, uh, filter, whatever, blue or red or filter, it just looks, it just pops more to me. And this is the interior's red now going in on only half of, you know, covering just about only half of the, uh, what I painted with the deep red. So to make it pop, add some white to it. And then the white is just, you know, kind of dotted in there. Just so it, it looks semi-shiny at least, you know, and I know a lot of you will say it looks cartoony and, and crappy, but just, just my style, I prefer, prefer it to look this way. And yes, I realize absolutely that it looks more cartoony, but I like it, so, yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to use some yellow for the uh, headlights as well. I think I originally painted, by the looks of it, I did paint those red originally, but then changed my mind for whatever reason, realizing that they're headlights maybe or whatever it was. Um, not that you can really see those after, once the finished product's there, because... Uh, the, a lot of the weathering covered it up, so... Just poke some yellow in there, because I am going to use the clear part at the end for that, uh, that light up there. Add some white to the yellow for the shine. Basically the same way I did the red, it's just with the yellow now. Pop it in there for a little bit of shine, same with the headlights. And then we move on, I believe we move on to assembling the armor, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken. I might be mistaken. Yes, and now just pure white dotting uh, the yellow portion, just to give it, again, just to give it that shine. But the headlights you can't really see, as I said, because they're covered up with weathering and so on and so forth. Anyhow. Oh no, we're moving on to green now. Oh yes, the uh, smoke launchers. Smoke launchers are... I am using Arden's green from scale 75, from scale 75 scale color on those. Um, not actually... I, I don't think I've ever used Arden green before Arden's green on it. Or I don't think I've ever used scale 75 Arden's green before this. I think that was just me testing out the color to see how it would work, and I wasn't too impressed with it. Uh, I should have just used the uh, olive green that came with the uh, with the Mang paint set. Um, dwarven gold on the ammo. And I think I also end up using Arden's green on the ammo belts. Yes, I do. That is also Arden's green on the ammo belts. Um, and that all gets washed down with, uh, with, uh, I believe it's either Dark Tone, or I may have found my Strong Tone at this point. I'm not sure, but I think it's Dark Tone. So it's, uh, yeah, Dark Tone. So it becomes very muted. Uh, those of you guys that know me, I do not like using metallic paints. I think they're just too bland and too shiny and just too bleh. <laughs> just too bleh in general. So, uh, whenever I paint anything with real metallics, I then use heavy washes on it, 
um, just to tone it down and, and dull it down a little bit because I do think metallic paints are just too too shiny and they pop way too much in a bad way. Um, there's no such thing as popping way too much contrast, but I just don't think metallic paints really add that much contrast to anything you paint with them. So, um, And I was not going to paint a couple of ammo belts and a couple of uh, buckles on backpacks using non-metallic metals. <laughs> So this was my uh this was my first laziness. This is the start of my laziness. Anyways, uh now I'm just touching up uh the tan areas that I screwed up while doing this. This is the reds and the yellows and so on and so forth. More NATO black now for the tracks and track pads, the rubber pads on the tracks. Uh sorry for the shaky camera too. I'm not really sure why that was happening back then. So this is still in June through August of last year. So I don't really remember what my setup was at that point. I know I was in the living room still. I didn't have my hobby room set up yet. So I think that's probably why that was just a little bit more... A uh, little bit less space to work with. I might have been nudging the camera or something. Although I'm sure it's just as shaky in the recent videos too. So I don't know. We'll see once we get there. <laughs> I'm sure it's just equally as shaky. But, uh, yeah, those of you that stuck by so far, we are actually getting there. We are at 40 minutes already, so we're, we're more than halfway there. Woohoo. <laughs> um, those of you guys that are sticking through this, thank you. I appreciate you. Um, those of you guys that gave up after the first 15 minutes, I don't blame you. <laughs> um... But, uh, yeah, again, like I said, let me know what you guys think of me just blabbing away. Just, you know, my, my, my whole goal here is just to make it a chill, relaxed video that you don't have to pay complete attention to. If you're working on, on your own projects or whatever the heck else, you can just listen to my soothing ASMR voice. <laughs> and we'll do your own thing while you're watching. Um, so the p goal here was... Uh, to, to dry brush the, the edge highlights on here because this this is, again, me being lazy trying to get it done faster. And, uh, I mean, it, it looked okay, but um, I realized when I was almost done with the tank that it just didn't really, didn't really cut it, so I end up, I, I end up going through quite a bit to, uh, to, to make the edge highlights pop a little bit more. I do end up brush painting them. Not dry brushing, but actually brush painting them afterwards, but, um, but yeah, you know, this is, this is what happens when you try and cut corners. So, so I just, basically, I, I ended up doing the same job twice, or if not three times, actually, it might have been three times, actually. Yeah, because I did it once with oil paints at the end, or not the, at the end, but I did it once with oil paints, and then once the weathering was done, I did it again with acrylics just to really make it pop. So, so yeah, I added myself a bit of extra work there, and that's okay. Anyways, that's what it looks like at this stage with the edge highlights technically being done, but again, I decide that it's not good enough. So, so I redid it afterwards. Uh, moving on now to the assembly. Um, just assemble all the little details. Uh, it's another thing I would have done differently if I would have thought ahead a little bit more. And those of you guys that know me, I don't really plan any of my projects that well. I just kind of go with it. Um, what I would have done differently is not assemble as much as I did. Especially the uh, 30 cal. I think that's a 30 cal. Or whatever the uh, the other machine gun on the other... Uh, on the other uh, side of the turret is there. Uh, the the windows, the the armor plated windows or whatever the heck, were very hard to fit on it later on because of the tight space, and they go on from the back side. So in retrospect, I probably would have left a few more things disassembled. But you know, again, if I ever build another. 135th scale M1A2 from Mang, then I'll know better. That's the uh, same with uh, some of the um, some of the uh, extra armor 
additional armor on there, I would have left that off. But, you know, oh well. Um, as far as assembling this goes, I didn't really have any issues with it. Everything fit quite well. Um, the only ones that I had a little bit of issues with, uh, fit issues, was the uh, side skirts. Um, they... The, the, the way the hooks were designed, or the way that Mang designed the hooks to uh, to attach those, just, I don't know if it was just me, maybe, again, um, maybe I should have attached the, the, the hooks before I assembled the entire side skirts, I, I don't know. But anyways, I had a little bit of issue installing those. Um, other than that, I mean, it, it all went together pretty, pretty easily, pretty comfortably, so... So yeah, um, I also didn't realize that I recorded this much, or I didn't cut out more of the assembly process because, I mean, I can only talk about assembly so much until I'm like, okay, here I'm assembling one piece, I'm assembling another piece, <laughs> um, so on and so forth. But, uh, you know, the whole time I'm I'm recording this uh, voiceover now. I'm sitting here in the back of my mind thinking, okay, what's your next project going to be? What do you really want to work on? Now, what I really want to work on is I have the Trumpeter 135th scale uh, Hind uh, Mi-35 or whatever the heck the designation for the helicopter, the Russian helicopter, the really sexy, beastie looking one in 135th scale. But I, I don't know... I don't know if I'm willing to take on such a large project, and as I mentioned earlier, I also have the Hobby Boss 172nd scale version of it, so I might do that first, <laughs> um, unless I end up doing the Apache or just something completely different. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I'm going to end up doing next, but... But I definitely want to keep it going, you know, I don't want to... I don't want to do another freaking... My last video... Last video before this that I published was, as of, I think, as of three or four days ago, was 219 days ago, so I am not making any promises as far as me doing, as far as me uploading regularly, but I am going to try my damnedest to at least upload more often, because, yeah, 200, uh, yeah, it's 219 days ago, like, last week when I looked, or whenever it was, um, and yeah, and you guys are still, you know, I'm still gaining new subscribers, and I'm still getting views and comments, and, and I appreciate all of you. I um, appreciate everybody that's subbed, I appreciate everybody that comments, I appreciate everybody that's, you know, that watches, obviously. But, uh, you know, a part of me feels like if I had more, uh, more regular uploads, then I can actually maybe, you know, actually make something out of this channel. As opposed to just uploading really once a year. You know, almost once a year, you know? Uh, anyways, um, here's the uh, side armor done on the uh, turret. That thing, that thing I glued on when I was attaching it. Luckily, the glue didn't, didn't really... It hasn't been holding it that well, so I've been able to remove it for uh, for for painting it later and for adding details to it later. I'm glad that happened because yeah, it's that would have been a pain in the butt to put all the um, all the glass in there or glass, all the uh, clear parts in there with it actually attached. So so yeah, now it is time for the tracks, I believe. And this is where I realize I'm like, oh crap, I don't have the uh the linking tracks, so I just kinda I just kinda glued them to one of the uh one of the uh wheels up top. Jeez, I don't even have my freaking tank lingo down anymore. That's how long it's been. I was gonna call them freaking road wheels. They're not road wheels, they're freaking um Damn, I used to be good at this. I used to be good at this back then. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an idler. It's not a road wheel. It's not a drive sprocket. It is a... Is it a run... No, it's not a running wheel. It's the one's on top. Anyways. <laughs> I'll get my shit together for the next video, I promise. 
Um, but yeah, anyways, this is me, uh... God, what are they called? What are, the, what are those little wheels up there called? Oh, man. Oh, man. Wow. Yeah, I, it's been a while, guys. I'm sorry, but it has been a while. Shit. Anyways, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, that's why I ended up gluing the other half of the track, too. Oh, yeah. It, you know, when you, when you forget what parts of a tank are called, or when I was, uh, when I was trying to find the words for, uh, for what I was doing, when I was applying the white to the black primer earlier, when I didn't remember the name, name of the technique, and I called it freaking, uh, pre-shading, or whatever the hell I called it. Yeah, it has been a while. It has been a long, long, I haven't, uh, those of you guys that know me, obviously, I paint figures also. I haven't picked up a figure I haven't painted a figure in at least oof in at least I want to say it's going on a year now. Yeah, it's been it's been a long while. It has been a long while, but uh like I said, uh moving forward, once this is published, I do have a couple of uh and here's the side skirt attached. Again, that was it's a pain in the butt, but it's finally attached and the tracks glued in there and yeah. <laughs> um, uh, as I said, though, I do have a few, uh, stream videos from Twitch that I'm going to look to see if I can edit, and that is figure painting, um, start to finish kind of thing. I am going to see if I can edit those down and make them YouTube-worthy. If not, then, then obviously I'm going to do my damnedest to put out new content, but you'll, you might see a... You might actually see a start to finish figure video, even if I can't edit the um the YouTube stuff. You might see or YouTube stuff, the uh, Twitch stuff, you might see a start to finish figure video before you see another modeling video. Um only because I'd like to paint a figure too, because it's been so long and see what a mess I can make out of it, you know? Be a fun little game. <laughs> um I'm using super glue here on these parts because they're resin. So the uh, Tamiya Extra Thin wouldn't work on them. Um, my Bob Smith Industries Super Glue dried out by then because it was so long. So I had to, I think I actually ran to like CVS or Stop and Shop or somewhere anyways that night and picked up a tube of Super Glue just so I can do this and get it done with. But this is still over the summer. We're still, uh, we're still in last June and August time frame here. And also, believe it or not, with um, with Corona, which I hope, with COVID-19, which I hope everybody's staying safe and everybody's doing okay, um, with COVID-19, the, uh, the black gloves that I like so much that I'm wearing here now, I love these things. I used to get them at Walmart in like packs of 40 or 20 or whatever the heck it was. Completely sold out everywhere. Um, I spent a better part of a couple of hours, I, I remember last year, going around uh, Walmart, uh, various auto parts stores, looking for these, and I couldn't find them anywhere. Uh, I'm sure they're back in stock now, so I can probably pick them up by now, but yeah, it was, that was nuts that, uh, that these gloves were completely sold out. I remember talking to, uh, to a guy at the, at the auto parts store, I'm like, you guys have any more of these black gloves? He's like, no, he's, you know, he's like, they, they sell, I get restocks, they sell out within like 10, 15 minutes of, I'm like, holy moly, that's nuts. Then I put the, uh, I don't know what those are, whether they're like extra armor plating or what those are, but I just stuck that on there because, again, just to break up the, uh, the tan. And now putting in the, uh, the rest of the details in there, or the rest of the uh, stowage. Um, and I think at this, I think it was probably around this point that I realized that I'd only be able to fit, I'd be lucky if I'd be able to fit half of, of, uh, of what I painted up, so I was just kind of picking and choosing what I thought would look better or best, and what would fit, um, yeah, those stowage racks, they look a lot bigger than they are, um, 
also not to mention the uh, the air conditioning unit takes up quite a bit of room. That the, the thing uh, that's next to the uh, thing that's like right above my hand in the upper stowage rack there, that's the air conditioning unit. That air conditions the turret that take took up quite quite a bit of space. Not that I didn't know that obviously when I built it, but hey, obviously drink again if you're playing the obviously drinking game. <laughs> but uh yeah, so here's the finished stowage. Um as you can see ammo boxes I used one, two, three that I can tell. It just yeah, the I just really overdid it with how much I painted as opposed to how much I used uh, the the water the water jugs I used what two in there as opposed to the four that I painted so yeah not nearly as much as I painted but that's okay um, you know I would have saved myself a lot of time not painting as much of it if I just dry fit and, and figured out what I wanted to put where ahead of time but it's okay I'll have it left over you know I'll have a bunch left over for another project I do want to build the um, I do want to build the uh, Bradley at some point. I don't have it, but at some point I would like to build the Bradley or something else. So, What are we airbrushing now? Oh, gloss acrylic varnish. So uh, what you guys saw, the uh, US uh, tan, whatever the heck it was, I think I was just uh, going over highlighting the, um, uh, the, the stowage containers, the railings on the stowage containers. I think that's what that was. Not entirely sure, actually. Uh, now we're just going to add some uh, airbrush thinner to the Vallejo gloss varnish. I think it's about 50-50 that I use. Yeah. And uh, just gloss the shit out of this now. Uh, ready for... Get it ready for weathering. And moving on to the next step. And I believe that once the gloss goes on, this is when we come into modern times, <laughs> which means two weeks ago, and this is when I really start screwing this up. I believe so. Am I using the water air? Yes, I am using the water airbrush on this. I, I again, as, as long as this project took, it was just, yeah, this is the water one. Yeah, okay. But anyway, I spray at, uh, I think I spray at 15 PSI. 15 the varnish I might actually spray at 20 I'm not sure but and uh, those of you guys wondering what PSI I spray it's anything from 15 to 20 depending on what it is yes and this is modern times now um decals that's another thing um I uh, along with the uh along with losing the uh spare track links for this to, to attach the tracks properly I lost the instruction manual as well, and by lost, I mean I'm pretty sure I threw out the box and everything was in the box. <laughs> I mean by lost, and I had a really hard time, not that I really searched that hard, but I had a hard time finding any any guides or even online like a PDF of the instruction manual. So as far as the decals go, I just slapped on whatever I thought would look cool, um, wherever the hell I wanted it to go kind of thing, and I didn't use any of the smaller ones, I only used like the main big ones, because I just didn't want to screw around with it, and as you can see here, I broke one of the, I broke the first decal that I was putting on, or one of the first decals that I was putting on, but I ended up fixing it and worked out, so, so it wasn't too bad, um, that probably also has to do with the age of the decals, since they've been sitting in various temperatures and various humidity levels and various conditions for, again, three years, so, but anyways, decals went on okay. Now some oil color, um, some filtering here. Um, using white, I just wanted to bring it up a little bit more. Um, filter it down, but bring it up a little bit more. Bring up the color a little bit more. Uh, in retrospect, I don't think the oil colors really added that much to it. I could have probably just foregone this step in general, or, or, or completely, but... You know, live and learn again. This was, this is, this isn't modern time. I'm sorry. This is maybe about. Oh, this is probably. This is probably around November or December of last year. So it's it's getting to modern time, but it's not modern time yet. Because I remember after I put the oils down, this thing sat for about a month before I touched it. So we're getting there, but we're still. We're still in last year. 
And once this section is done, me uh, applying the oil filters here, this video kind of turned into a bit of a Frankenstein. Um, this is where I got lazy and I just wanted to get this done. So all the clips of me doing stuff are a lot shorter as... If any of you can tell, there's only 15 minutes left on this, and this thing's not even nearly done. Um, but I'll try and cover everything that I do in the shorter clips here. And this is where a lot of the mistakes starts happening, start happening, and this is where this thing turns out not nearly, not nearly as nice or as as, as well as I would have liked it to. But as I said, I will let you guys be the judge of that once you see the final product. Um, I, I think the, um, think me applying the oils on here, as I said, in retrospect, I could have, I could have not done it and it, it wouldn't have really detracted from anything. But at the same time, I don't think it hurt it either. I mean, it did add a little bit of a, it did add a little bit of a pop to it. So it wasn't too bad. Plus, it um, it kind of muted down or, or combined the layers underneath it a little bit, as a filter should. And here it is with the oil applied. And as you can see, I also edge highlighted using the oil. And now I let it sit for, yeah, I think it's it was a month that I let it sit for. And here we go into gloss varnish now over the oils once they were dry. And here we go into into UC starting to screw up. <laughs> UC getting lazy and starting to screw up. Dark Dirt Clay Wash from Flory Models. Um, again, not the best not the best choice. I should have done a pin wash on it. Um, I do find it very relaxing to clean this stuff off of models for some reason. I like sitting there with my little cotton swab and just picking away at it and wiping it down and and uh, getting rid of it. So that's that's why I did it. But I should have done a pin wash because it would have looked so much better. It would have, yeah, it would have just come out looking so much better. But uh, here's the whole thing, all dirty. And here's me now starting to clean it, which was fun for me, I guess, you know, relaxing for me. But uh, it's also very time consuming. I think the, the pin wash actually would have been faster, too. Um, but it, it's okay. I mean, this is, but this is where it starts going downhill. This is where it starts going downhill quite a bit. Here's the, uh, uh, what, what I do is, um, you know, you can use, with the clay washes, you can either use water or I just use saliva, uh, believe it or not, on the on the uh, Q-tip. And just wipe it away, leave it in the recesses. Uh, again, pin wash would have worked so much better, but here it is clean, semi-clean at least, you know. Doesn't look too bad. I still think it would have looked better with the pin wash. Although, something to be said about the clay washes, they kind of add a, a realistic grime to it. Um, now I, I did apply some uh, testers dual coat to it to, to get rid of the gloss. Here it is not shiny anymore. And it's still not looking too bad. Still not looking too bad. So we're not, we're not quite there yet at the complete screw-ups but we're about to get there. This is where we're about to get there. So, chipping. I'm using red leather for some reason. This is the first paint I grabbed. I'm like, all right, red leather is going to look cool. Whatever. No, it did not. Red leather looked crappy. It just... It was not... It was not the right choice of paint on this at all. Like, at all. Don't, uh... Don't use red leather for chipping. <laughs> um, your Abrams tank, in other words. Do as I say, not as I do, at this point. Um, still, still okay at this point. Still okay at this point. This is still okay. Still okay. Doing little chips here and there. Still okay. This is where we screw up. 
this is where we screw. I don't know what the hell I was thinking adding that patch there. I mean, I know what I was thinking, but it was just the wrong, wrong thing to think. <laughs> um, that's okay, though, because I kind of fix it, but kind of don't. Um, I mean, I fix it, but it just still doesn't look that great. But here's the, um, yeah, here's the red leather all chipped and looks like crap. Um, so I go over that with some Dubai Brown in the hopes of bringing down the red a little bit. And it did work, you know, it, it, it didn't turn out terrible, but I wouldn't have, I wish I wouldn't have done it. I wish I wouldn't have used the red leather. I should have used a dark brown, like a German dark camel brown or something from Vallejo. But me being lazy now, me just trying to get this down, I was like, you know, let's screw it. Let's just, just, just go. I'm just, I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna do it, and it turns out whatever it's gonna turn out like. But the Dubai brown did bring it, did make it look a little better. Unfortunately, you can still see some of the red leather poking through it. That's okay. Um, you know, live and learn, move on. Don't be lazy like me. <laughs> um, just don't be lazy like me. And again, I don't know what the hell I was thinking with the red leather. Now we're, this was two weeks ago now, so. So this is me just trying to finish this off and just move on, put it on my shelf and just never look at it again, never touch it again, and let it collect dust. <laughs> just finish a video and move on. It's, uh, those those two spots there on top of the turret that you see were actually that wasn't that was done because I had some paint chip off of there somewhere along the way in the past for some reason I don't know how I don't know when um so I had to cover that up but here's the Dubai brown um, now I'm using U.S. Desert tan light 50/50 uh, mix with white to, uh, to to bring out some of the chipping on there. Kind of little uh, little splotches of the uh, little lines along the uh, the bottom of the chips there, just to bring it out a little bit to give it a little bit more uh, volume to make it look a little bit more realistic. So I, I go over all the chips basically, and you do want that kind of pointing in one direction, so you don't want one going vertically and the other horizontally. You don't want one on top of a chip. If there's already one on the bottom, you kind of want to stick to just one direction in one area. So I did it all going vertically, or sorry, I did it all going horizontally along the bottom of the chips. Um, you don't want to like cover the entire chip with it. You only want it in one, going in one direction, if that makes sense. And this is where I decide to edge highlight it more with that mixture as well because again I didn't think it was popping enough but here it is done and here's the uh, glass installed so at this point I also realized that the the, the glass had uh, borders around it edges around it that were the same color as the tank so I went over it with uh, number one brush painted uh, badger primer over it black primer to give me a base to work off of and then I went in and really screwed it up. So I wanted to add a nice blue tint to the glass. Uh, Citadel washes were not the right choice for this. I should have used a filter. I did not. Um, it turned out looking like complete crap. This is probably the biggest screw up of the entire... The, the, in my opinion, this ruined the entire model for, for anything other than just sitting on it. Look how crappy that looks. It was just bad. I'm like, what the hell am I going to do here? So in an effort to fix it, I end up uh, getting some um, uh, some Vallejo. Well, first of all, I'm doing the edges around the the, the glass where where it's the color of the tank. But what I end up doing in an effort to fix it is uh, Vallejo gloss uh, medium or gloss varnish. I'm sorry. To bring back a little bit of the sheen to the window, a little bit of the shine to the windows, and it worked okay, but it's still very, um, still very muddy looking. Still, yeah, still not very good. But you'll see that, you'll see that in a little bit. Right now, I'm just working around the, uh, the, the, the glass with the uh, 
parts that have to be painted the same color as the tank. I just did simple edge highlights on there. I didn't, I was, at this point, I'm just like, this, this is a turd already, so I'm just going to move on. Um, added some white to that uh, U.S. tan highlight or whatever the hell the color is called. Added some white for my final edge highlight there. And just called it a day. And just moved on and called it a day. Picked up some of the picked up some of the bolts more. Just in an effort to make it pop more, but I, I did not at, at this point I did not have it in me to really put that much time into it anymore. So I was really just trying to get it done. And here it is. Done. I don't think I've yeah, I this wasn't me apply I haven't applied the uh gloss varnish to the windows yet. Here it goes. Uh, it looks a little better, but it still looks like a turd. Um, anyways, we are coming towards the end of this video. Two minutes left. Um, those of you guys that are still with me, thank you so much. Um, again, sorry for this Frankenstein crap of a video. Let me know what you guys think about me babbling through the whole thing, or whether you'd rather see a different format. I hope to have another video of some kind for you guys within the next couple of weeks. We'll see how that goes. We'll see how successful I am. But um, here it is done. Here's the tank pretty much done. Um, there's, you know, it doesn't look great. Um, could have looked worse, I guess, but it could have looked a lot better. It just looks too messy to me. It's not, uh, not that it's not, you know, it's a tank. It's supposed to have chips and, and, you know, not be clean. But you can make something dirty and you can make something weathered without making it look messy, and I just made it look messy. Anyways, I tried putting on some uh, pigment at the end there, just to kind of to kind of try tying it all in together somewhere, somehow, but I gave up on that quite quickly afterwards, because it wasn't really working. Like, I just, and at this point, I didn't want to I didn't want to put that much more time into it. I was done with it, so I put some pigment on the tracks, I put in, in a couple of places, but it just min minimal amounts, and it didn't really add anything to it. So, yeah, anyways, um, if you're still with me, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much. Uh, those of you guys that have been subbing and, and as I said, commenting and, and still, you know, watching, um, thank you so much. Uh, hopefully, I'll have more and better content up for you guys more frequently. I'm going to try to have something else ready within the next couple of weeks. But anyways, um, let me know what you guys think in the comments, as always. Um, if you're not subscribed, and for whatever reason you enjoyed this, thank you. I appreciate you. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I guess I'll see you guys next time on this. You know, the stay tuned. There's a little bit more. There's a little uh, slideshow of uh, final picks at the end there. But, uh, again, thank you. Sub, comment, all that nice stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one.